Lately, I've been working on ways to automate parts of my video workflow, so doing things like automatically generating my YouTube chapter markers, and even doing things like automatically generating the video editor project file with all the files loaded into it so I don't have to go and do it myself. That part's still a bit of a work in progress though. So my automation actually starts at a way earlier point though. It actually starts while I'm recording the video because I'm using OBS not just because OBS is a good application, but because OBS allows you to do things like scenes and modify your camera while you're recording, which isn't something I can say for a lot of others out there. While it's not going to be perfect for every sort of video workflow, if you do record your videos in a very consistent way like I do, I can guarantee there is a lot you can automate. So the first way you can automate is through the use of scenes. So right now we're on the full cam scene, but I have a couple of other scenes as well. So you probably probably noticed that from time to time my camera will move between this location here to the top right, to the top left, back to the bottom right, and back to the bottom left. So these are four separate scenes where I can very easily switch my camera around on the fly and I don't have to go and move it around in post. The other way I could go and handle this is record my webcam or record my camera I guess and my desktop separately. That's a perfectly fine way to do it, but what it does mean is that I have to edit where my camera is located. When it's going to be located in one of these four locations, I'm not going to move it around on the fly. So in my situation, because it's very consistent where I put the webcam, it's easier just to have these as separate scenes. Lately, I've been playing around with the way that my cameras have been shown. So right now, what you're seeing is what's called the 4x3 box. It's actually a 3.5x3, just because I felt like that looked a little bit better than 4x3 and way better than 1x1. One one. But if I want to go and switch over to that one, I can hide this camera right here and show this camera right here. And this is the old 16x9 I used to use. Now, I don't actually have this on a hotkey because I'm not going to be switching between them in a video. I'm going to be using one for one video and then another one for another video. If I did want to switch between them, I could go and do that, but I don't really see any reason to go and do so. Now, I have a couple of other layouts as well. So we also have the full cam that we saw right at the start of the video. And then I have this full cam overlay, which I've been trying out. I don't think you've seen it in a video yet. Maybe you have, I'm not too sure. But this is a new one that I've made, which I'm going to be using during my outro. And then we obviously have the Patreon one as well, where it shows, you know, the list of my patrons. Now, I've actually got all of these scenes bound to hotkeys. So the way I've got it set up is one is going to be in the bottom left hand corner. And this is one on my numpad. 3 is going to be the bottom right hand corner, so as you might realize on a numpad, 1 is actually in the bottom left, and then 3 is in the bottom right. 9 is going to take me to the top right, and then 7 is going to take me to the top left. As for doing the full cam, that one is on 5, and then the outro screen is on 6, and the Patreon screen is on 8. The reason why those are on 6 and 8 is because I've sort of run out of keys. Now, if you do have a numpad, I would recommend using your numpad like this because if you're like me, I don't actually use the numpad for anything. So I'm basically just turning it into like a bank of hotkeys. And if you do have a keyboard that actually does have a bunch of macro keys on it, that might be a good way to go about it as well. Even though most of my videos are recorded with the camera in the bottom right, it's not always the best way to go and do it. So let's say that I, I don't know, have uh, HTOP for example, and there's something important I want to show in the bottom right hand corner. If I couldn't move my camera, I would have to go and edit it. Instead of that though, I could move my camera into the top right or the top left where there's nothing I want to be showing right now, and that just gives me much more flexibility with how I want to record. I also have a hotkey for starting and stopping recording. Obviously, I can't press it right now, but it's on numpad zero. Once again, numpad zero isn't a key that I actually use for anything, so if I say make a mistake, I can just smash that key, stop the recording, restart it again, and go from there. I don't have to go and like fiddle with this menu it's just not worth your effort to do that. Just set some sort of hotkey, even if it's not on your numpad, have some sort of hotkey to start and stop recording. Now, when it comes to tweaking your scenes, it's really difficult to actually move stuff exactly where you want it to be located inside of OBS. So let's say that we want to move this webcam right here. We'll take it out of the box, and then we want to put it back in the box. Very difficult to do because the only snapping that exists is snapping to the edges, and because this is very close to the edge, 
it's just going to snap automatically to it. Now, there is one thing you can go and do. You can move stuff around with your arrow keys, and you will eventually get it back to where you want it, hopefully, but it might take a little bit of time. The easier way you can go and do this is if you go and right-click anywhere on the preview window here, and go down to preview scaling, and set it to your canvas size rather than scale to window, Obviously, because I'm recording my screen, it's going to look really weird. What we can actually go and do now is zoom in and out on the preview window. So the way that we go and zoom is hold down spacebar, and then we can go and use our mouse wheel and scroll as much as we want. And if we're holding down the spacebar and click anywhere outside of the main scene right here, it will actually let us drag it around. So let's go and zoom in on this section right here. And right here. Okay, cool. This is where we want to be. And we click on this one, and now we actually have much, much more fine grain control. Obviously, it will still snap to it if you get close enough, but it's much harder to actually snap it, and you can move it exactly where you want it without having to fiddle around with your arrow keys. And then my recommendation is once everything's placed where you want it to be, go and right click again and click lock preview. So lock preview is basically going to stop you from actually moving anything around. So let's go on back to the scale to window. Now I can't actually drag anything until I go and right click again and then unlock the preview. Now I can actually move stuff around. So if you don't ever need to move anything, just make sure it's locked as a default, just in case you accidentally move something. Now, when it comes to modifying your camera properties, I'm pretty sure this works just fine on Windows, but on Linux, never ever open up the camera properties window inside of OBS. So if we go and do that, it does this to my camera, and it did basically the same thing to my webcam as well every single time. The only thing you want to do from this window is go to where it says video format here and change it off of YUYV4222 because that is going to not work at all. It used to work a little bit on my webcam, just be really laggy. Just go and set it to BGR3 emulated, and then the camera should work just fine. And now we're back to working. So just don't do properties in there. But there is a way you can go and modify your properties. So if you have a camera like I do, do it on the camera. If you can't do it on the camera, go and download a package called V4L2 Utils. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. It's on most distros. And what it lets you do is modify all of those same properties, but do it from the command line. So then every time you open up OBS, you can just run a script and it automatically fixes everything for you. Now, the other big reason why I use OBS is because it seems to be the only recording application on Linux that actually supports LUTs. So a LUT is basically a way to, I guess, modify the colors that are being recorded by your camera. Now, if we want to go and apply one of those, we can go into the filter section here and if we click the plus down here we can go to apply lot and I'm running the gaming careers Huerta lot. Now I'll leave a link to that one in the description down below. These ones don't actually come with OBS. So we can go and like crank this way up and it looks something like this. Obviously at this point it's way too extreme but I feel like having it at 30% or so does look better than just not having it at all. But there's plenty of other LUTs we can try in here. So like, let's say the uh, the stone LUT, for example. That's not that much different. But if we crank that way up, it sort of like really oversaturates the reds and the pinks in the image. Obviously, if I really wanted to, I could do this in post with color correction. But I'd much rather just have it looking the way I want it to look while I'm actually recording, especially because I record my camera with the actual scene. So if I tried to do color correction, I would end up color correcting the entire video and my desktop would end up looking weird, not just my camera. Because I'm running a fairly decent camera, I don't really need to do much in the way of color correction. Any color correction I do is entirely for effect. So if we wanna go and do that, what we can do is go into color correction here and the order of these effects actually does matter. So in this case, what's going to happen is sharpen will be applied first, then LUT, and then color correction. In my opinion, you should probably have the color correction before the LUT, and then the LUT should be the extra effect you do once you have the camera actually looking decent. That's what I did when I had the webcam. But if you want to go the other way around and have the color correction there for the effect, that's also a perfectly valid strategy as well. Now, as for doing audio adjustment, you can go and apply filters to your microphone as well. And I've got a couple of them in here. So I've got noise suppression, noise gate, and compressor. And you might notice there's no EQ here. And that's because there's not actually an EQ plugin built in for OBS. And the EQ plugins that do exist 
are only compiled to work on Windows. So if you're on Windows, you can get one of those to work just fine. But Linux guys, I'm pretty sure you're going to be left out. So as for doing EQ, you're probably going to have to do it in post. But having these three right here is going to be very useful, especially if you're using something like a Blue Yeti, like I was before. So noise suppression does exactly what the name says. It will try to suppress noise. So any like small background noises that you might hear, like maybe the fans of your computer, some typing, things like that, it's going to try to cut those out. It's not going to do everything, but it will cut out a lot of that background noise. Now, a noise gate is a bit more, I guess, harsh. A noise gate is going to effectively turn off your microphone until it hears a sound above a certain level. And once that happens, then it will start listening to audio. But once the sound disappears, then it's basically going to shut off again. And the compressor is going to, I guess, change the difference between the quiet and the loud noises. So if I was to like move further away from my microphone, the compressor was basically going to make it so the volume level doesn't change that much. And if I go closer, it shouldn't be that much of a difference. Now, you might notice that both of these are disabled. And that's because I actually have compression built into my mixer board. So I don't actually need to do it in OBS. And if you do have an external mixer board, that is a much better way to go about doing this. Especially because I can also do things like EQ. That probably sounds horrible right now. But I do have the ability to do it on the mixer board itself. Now, not everything can be automated, it really should be automated. So if you need to show, I guess something spur in the moment, I wouldn't recommend setting up an extra scene in OBS or loading the image into OBS. That's just a big waste of time. My recommendation instead would be either sh do it in post or show it while you're recording. Both of those are much better solutions. Keep the stuff you're doing in OBS, I guess, very generic. So maybe you have a scene where you use to actually show a news article or show an image, but I wouldn't have that specific thing loaded into OBS unless you know you're gonna need it like that every single time. So if it's say like a channel logo, for example, that might actually make sense in OBS. However, in the case of a live stream, it is a little bit different. In that case, because you're probably not capturing your desktop, you're just capturing a window, just because you don't want to show information that you shouldn't be shown on a live stream. In that case, yeah, loading it into OBS does actually make much, much more sense because you don't really have a post where you can go and do stuff. Or if you say like accidentally show a password or an IP address, anything like that, that should probably be done in post as well. Or if you misspeak and you need to like have a correction there, there's no point like going back into OBS, adding a text element. I just bumped my mic. Having a text element there, redoing it with the mistake. It's just easier to do that in post as well. So that's generally how I end up working with OBS. If you have any, you know, suggestions for things I can improve upon or maybe even know about an EQ plugin, let me know in the comments section down below. And if you know anything about how to do EQ properly, that would be lovely to know because I have no idea what I'm doing anyway. So fiddling around with what's going on on my mixer board is sort of just me kind of guessing. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. Before I go though, I would like to, that's the wrong screen, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Monza, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave, pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.